How you doing today, Pastor? I'm good, Bob. How are you? I'm doing good. What are you cooking? So, steaks, you know, so expensive. Yeah. You can take a big chuck roll, like for pot roast, and slice those suckers in the steak. Yeah. And that's what I've done here. And uh, if you'll hand me that salt. I've got them a little bit marinated. Okay. You want me to salt? Yeah. Salt them pretty good. Okay. That looks okay. good. That looks good. And then I'm gonna flip them over and do it again. So that's a like a, a chuck roast? Yes, yeah, a chuck roast. And we're gonna cook them in the steak. Yeah, see, I grew up in the, my daddy's butcher shop. Ah. That's where you cut the chuck roast all the time. Yeah. Yeah. People but I never never made steaks out of it. People don't know that. No, I never heard of that. That's yeah. good. All right, let's salt this side. Okay. No pepper? Uh you can do pepper. Yeah. Okay. I got some. You got Not some enough. More. Okay. <laughs> good deal. Yeah, but tailgating, man, you can do anything. I've seen about anything out there. I know that. Now, some of them get a little crazy. Yes, yeah. they do. Yeah. Like, what are y'all thinking doing that? But simple steak. Oh, what's all the green stuff on there? Oh, that's some uh, parsley and some uh, garlic. That just gets in the way, doesn't it? It does. Like my grandson says, ooh, salad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay, and what else you got? I know here? you're familiar with that. Is this that hot count I had some the other day that lit me up the sausage? Ah, uh -huh, when was that? Oh, uh, that must have been Sean cooked it. Oh, no. This is just Koneka. Okay. Uh, his was like, oh, man, I couldn't eat it. It's too hot. <laughs> yeah, I know. Spicy I, hot. I'm yeah. Gonna. So we're going to do these Konekas for instead of hot dogs. Yeah. yeah. Now, this is a big tailgating deal, the Koneka sausage. Yes, sir. You know, when I drive up to Alabama to the football game now, we always stop at the uh, exit where the Koneka story, yeah. and they got all everything. Then you got wings in here? Yeah, we're going to do some wings. So my right. secret on that, if you'll uh, blanch them for like five minutes. What's blanching boil, me? Boiling water. Okay. And I use half water, half soy sauce. Okay. So it's got a little salt in it. And I, and I don't separate them because they're hard to grill that way. Easy to grill this way. Okay. You can separate them later. Yeah, so these wings right here. Yeah, right, like yeah. I, this is good. But yeah. I, I like the other side, but I like oh, the where, you, where you cut them. Then we got all that good got stuff. Got the veggies over here. Yeah. Okay. This kind of good stuff right here. Good deal. Now that's going to be good. Pineapple's huge. Good. I right, we're looking at these old steaks. How are they doing? Pretty good. I like mine kind of medium, a little red yeah. in the middle. So we're gonna do that. Let those rest. Now we're gonna put our wings on them. Okay, you put them on. Yes, sir. So the good thing about these, they're almost cooked. Yeah. So by the time they get a good char on it. Oh, get over there. Are we ready to sauce these? You see, I've made wings, but I've never heard of the blanching. So you just put Well, you, you can do it on, uh, I mean, you could do them raw. Yeah, I know. You, but it's what it takes usually, forever. Yeah, I know. So that's good. Yes, sir. Well, that's your eye. Yeah, we'll let these cook a minute. All right. Close that lid. How long have you been cooking? Man. Probably uh, at least 45 years. Okay, so you started as a teenager. Yeah, I did. How'd that get going? I started working, actually lied about my age to get into a job. <laughs> and uh, they didn't look, I was going to be 16 at the end of the year, but right. 15, they hired me anyway. Uh -huh. And then uh, I worked with a chef at a buffet house. I'd ride my motorcycle in at 5 in the morning, yeah. with him, and then ride to school at 7.30. Now you quit that motorcycle riding, did you? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a little crash room, so we just had, a little. Yeah. yeah. So you started riding it, and you go in there and work. Yeah, I go into work and uh, talk to him. And I thought thought that was a neat profession. Yeah. And then I I thought maybe I'd steer out of that, but man, I always came back to cooking. Yeah. And, uh, love it. Yeah. So I was actually working in a nursing home, and saw they were starting the first chef school in Alabama. Were you on the nursing side of the nursing home? You yeah. weren't cooking it. No, I was yeah. I was in nursing school. Okay. So uh so I go home to a pregnant wife and say, I really want to be a chef and they're starting the chef first chef school and 
I really feel like this is what the Lord is telling me to do. And she said, well, I'm your wife. So I'm 100% behind you. If the Lord's telling you, I'm behind you. Ah. And if she'd have said, no, nah, you're going to finish that school and make us some money, I'd have done that. Yeah. But because of what she said, man, it just went up from there. Okay. And the Lord opened every door. Every step was, as long as I was listening to him, every step was great. Amen. So uh, what do you, what do you think is like an easy way to really get into the community? Like what we're doing here? Or- oh, yeah. You, you know, I, I read, uh, oh, became my friend up at Syracuse University. And he, he was the first person I ever heard say it. Yeah. That on the college campus, they made the, the kitchen in the home became the altar for evangelists. Wow. Yeah. And what they did is they would have all these college kids come in. And they'd just get around the table and they'd cook and the wife would cook and the husband would cook. And, and, and so the kids would come. And it's amazing how while they ate that they would talk about their life, yeah. just like we do around our own kitchen. Sure. Table. And it just brought down the barriers and, and made the kitchen table, the altar is the way that they, they talked about it. The food distribution thing, because it just it just breaks down barriers. It's yeah. incredible when you go on these campuses, and you see it all over the campus with, with people out tailgating, yeah. and it's amazing how it, it breaks down the walls and and allows ministry uh, to go on. And so that's a big part of what you've been doing for us yeah. for ten years. You have me that big white platter. Yeah, but I'd never really put it in my mind of how the people who work in the cooking industry, that Sunday is like, yeah. that's money day. Yeah. They can't come to church. A lot and of them so can't. so you've got to go to them. Right. And so with Chefs International and the other kind of things you do is you bring these people together kind of in a, a, a more of an off time yes, sir. for them. Uh, it's a great ministry. It's part of the community. And we talk to them, you know, they just call me and we talk all the time about different issues and some of them real personal, some yeah. of them just, you know, encouragement. Yeah. But I love it, man. I I really thought that ministry was Sunday and Wednesday. Yeah. Ten years ago. Yeah, sure. I really did. Right. When I got into ministry, I'm like, oh, it's 24 7. Hey, Amen. Seven days a week. Plus one. Yeah. <laughs> so now you can feel your stakes to tell how they're done, but you can also use this. Now we're hitting about 130 there. This one's probably a little more. So how hot does it need to be? I want to pull in. I've never seen one. Yeah, you need one. They ain't cheap, but. Yeah. So you just stick that in there and it tells you. Yeah. So this one's about almost medium. I got some deacons I need to stick this up. (laughs) Get a reading on them. Yeah, see how hot they are. They're on fire or not. Look at that. Well, most every deacon I've had the pleasure to be with. Yeah. Has been on fire. Amen. And they're just something else. I live across the street from one of the deacons. Yeah. He's always asking if I need help with something. Praise the Lord. Yeah, these wings are looking good. They are. And this one is probably about there, too. This one's dragging. Uh-huh. But it's a little larger. A little bit bigger, so we're going to let him cook. Okay. Now, while, while we got that, we're going to ah. hit some of this pineapple. Here, I'm going to hold this over and get it a little closer. Yeah. I like Man. I like this pineapple. Me too. I love it cooked there anyway, but does that smell good? A couple good? of nectarines on there. Ooh, a nectarine? I've never... Well, they're firm. I know you yeah. can do a peach too. Right. But I've just never seen a but nectarine. They're firm on. enough to throw on the grill. Yeah. Then you can uh, dip them in a little sugar when they're done. Uh-huh. And torch them with a torch. Make that little creme brulee uh, yeah. crust on there. Okay. Uh, and then throw some ice cream on it. Yes, sir. Oh, my Lord. I, I got to... I got to remember all that. So, uh. yes, sir. All right. So this connecting is good and hot. Nearly all of our churches have summer interns and youth, yep. but I guarantee you, it's a little handful of churches that's got an intern coming to the culinary. True. That's true. Yeah. And you just multiply that with the Lord. Amen. And what's cool is, you know, a lot of churches now are, you know, hiring chefs and right because they're they need one. Yeah. Ooh, look at those chicken wings. And we work hard on, you know, how to serve food, the right temperatures and all that. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, we got a tailgate party going on right here. Guarantee you. All right, that's got to cook a little longer. 
Man, look at that. Look at here. If I took this to the tailgate party. I think you'd be popular. Wow. That would be the way to do it right there. Amen. Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't even care who won the game after you had this. I'm going to put some chimney on there. Some what? Chimichurri. Oh, I'm going to come around here. Uh, what is that you're putting on there? Chimichurri. It's, it's kind of like a, it's got a little bit of vinegar and lemon, uh -huh. garlic, and cilantro and parsley. It's kind of like an Argentina kind of little steak sauce. Argentine. Yeah. Now you can oh. just do butter. You know, that's my dad always like just butter on his steak. Right. Man. We hungry. Yeah, these are dying good. Mm -hmm. I'm to put the rest of the fruit on there. I'm probably gonna put the that corn oh, okay. veggies on. Yeah. Do you get burned very often? A little bit. Yeah. We call them kitchen tattoos. Kitchen tattoos. Yeah, when you get a little burn. Uh -huh. Oh. Well, when we see somebody with a real good one, we say, oh, that's a good kitchen tattoo you got there. <laughs> when I was in Turkey, and uh, one of the chefs took me back in his kitchen. Yeah. And uh, he didn't speak English. But he was showing me everything, and, you know, we still spoke that language. Sure. And then I pointed to his burn marks on his arm. And I pointed to mine, and we, same thing, you know? <laughs> and we both laughed. Yeah. And I told the interpreter, I said, we call them kitchen tattoos. He was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> he loved it. That was just cool to... Oh, that's good. I just wanted to show you how easy it was to get together with a guy and cook and just talk. Yeah. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Yes, sir. Love you, Bob. Love you, Pat. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right.